Son, we live in a world that has walls. And those walls had to be protected from men with guns. Who's going to do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? How the greater responsibilities than you can find them? You weep for Santiago and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know. That while Santiago's death was tragic, have probably saved lives. And my existence, though good, good, tragic, and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You don't want the truth. Because deep down in places you don't talk about the parties, you want me on that wall. You need me there. We use words like code, honor, and loyalty. We use words as a backbone of his life stand defending something. You use them as a punchline. Now I needed the time, nor the inclination, to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps in the, above the very blanket of freedom I provide and then questions the way in which I provide it. I'd rather you just say thank you and be on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you grab a weapon and stay in the post. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you're entitled to. <laughs> Mr. Hooper. That there is the USS Indianapolis. Japanese submarines slammed two torpedoes into our side, Chief. We were, we were coming back from the island and turning into Lady. She delivered a bomb. Hiroshima bomb. <clears throat> The vessel went down in nine minutes. Didn't see the first shot for about half an hour. Tiger. Thirteen footer. You know, you know how you can tell that cheap when you're in the water? You leave from the dorsal to the tail. But what we didn't know is our mission was so secret, no distress signal had been sent. Didn't even miss it over due for a week. Early next morning, shots come cruising. So we phoned like a uh, like a big square, like uh, like you see on the Battle of Waterloo, or on a calendar. The idea was that the shot would come to the nearest guy. And he'd start kicking and screaming and pounding right at the shock. And sometimes that shot could go away. Sometimes it wouldn't go away. Sometimes that shot would look right in your eyes. You ever looked at a shock side, Chief? It's got black eyes. Life's in size. When you look at him, it just like, doesn't look like he's breathing. Just bites you. A high pitched screaming comes. See, turns red. His eyes roll, black eyes roll white. Hm. And they all come in and start revving you to pieces. Anyway, by the sixth day, we seen about a thousand sharks. Don't know how many men, I know how many sharks. 
Man, we're averaging about six an hour. On the seventh day, Mr. Hooper, run out into an old buddy of mine, Henry Robinson, baseball player from Cleveland, buzzes me. Anyway, I thought he was asleep. Swam over to wake him up. Bobbed up and down just like in the water. He's like a top guy. <laughs> anyway, he been venting in half from the waist down. Three hours later, the big old PPY and Chopper came in. He was searching, searching for us. We saw the pilot and said, hey, we're here. I'm like screaming, shouting, we're here. So the pilot, the pilot saw us. He can't have been any older than you, Mr. Hooper. Went off, didn't even come down for us. Another three hours later, another chopper came in. Cam came swooping in and started picking us all up. You know, that was the scariest time for me. When the pit picked up, just hoping that shot didn't come. I gotta get out of this water, I thought. But just get me out of this water. I'll never wear a life jacket again. So, 1,500 men went in the water. 500 men came out. Sharks to the rest. June 15, 1945. Anyway, <laughs> we delivered the bomb. 